Well, gas prices are still on the rise, with the national average climbing five cents Monday night to hit a record $4.92 per gallon. And out here in, in uh, California, it's uh, topping about $6 or more a gallon. According, this is according to the American Automobile Association. Americans today are paying $1.87 more than they were just a year ago when the price was $3.05 per AAA. And the forecast suggests that the worst is not nearly over. So what is the Biden administration doing about this? Mostly blaming Vladimir Putin uh, while continuing to wage a war on fossil fuels and American energy independence. So what is the road that the Biden administration has the American people driving on and where will it lead? With me now to talk about this is U.S. Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, who is a member of Homeland Security Government Affairs Committee and a member of the Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee. Senator, welcome back to the program. Well, Tony, hope you're well. I'm doing, I am doing well, thank you. I, I, I didn't have to fill up my tank today, so I'm doing better. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I had a point, I got a truck. I drive a, a big pickup truck. And so I can't even fill it up because most gas pumps stop at $100. Uh, how long is this gonna last? Is there any relief in sight for the American people? Well, according to Joe Biden, there's not, because he says there's nothing he can do about it, although he caused it. Uh, you know, it was his war on fossil fuel, as you mentioned. The, the first shot across the bow in that war was the cancellation of the Keystone XL pipeline. But uh, his agencies are making it difficult to, for oil drillers to get permits to drill oil. You know, his allies in these groups are, you know, litigating, making it more and more difficult. Uh, he's nominating people that want to starve the oil and gas industry of capital. Uh, it, it's bizarre how radical right. uh, President Biden's uh, nominees are for these sub-cabinet posts. And so, again, this, this, uh, is, uh, their state, this is their stated strategy. Explain that for just a moment, because I don't think people realize the layers that have been put in place where they're starving the industry of capital. They're actually not loaning money to these projects or opening up resources to these projects, only green-related projects. Right, and, of course, you've got the whole effort of ESG, uh, that's putting pressure on, on corporate boards not to uh, and have and other people not to invest in uh, fossil fuel companies. And so across the board, uh, radical leftists throughout these organizations, certainly in this administration, are doing everything they can to force us into a green energy future. And listen, I, I'm for an all above energy strategy, but it has to be market based. Uh, it has to remain com economically competitive, and we have to be concerned, you know, our, can green energy meet our demand? And right now it can't. And so we're going to be a fossil fuel-based uh, economy. But it's important to note, this didn't just happen. This is caused by uh, the, the war on fossil fuel. This is their desired result. They knew when you when you put a, when you go to war on fossil fuel, when you starve the industry of capital, when you reduce the supply of it, it's going to automatically increase prices. Now, maybe they're shocked by how high the prices have increased. They don't want to be held accountable. They thought they'd be able to kind of just, I guess, raise it enough to force people into, for example, electric vehicles, that type of thing, and just, what, never be held accountable? Now, they do have the complicit media in their back pocket, so that's a pretty good assumption on their part. But gas prices are so high. Like you said, you know, $100, more than $100 to fill up a, a truck, a lot of people can't fill up their cars. They, they can only put in yeah. $40 or $50 at a crack. So people are definitely noticing this. They're seeing high grocery prices, but gasoline in particular is what everybody sees because every time you drive up to that pump, you see now Wisconsin, some gas stations over five bucks a gallon. I, I never thought I'd see that in my lifetime. I didn't either. I mean, it's something we've seen in Europe, but I didn't th think we would see it here in this country as, as uh, vast as our resources are. I, I, again, want to underscore this because the president is talking out of both sides of his mouth. He's saying, well, I, I'm opening up leases. We're allowing people to drill. We're encouraging them to drill. But what he doesn't talk about is what you just were, was describing, the underlying layers of bureaucracy that is prohibiting our energy producers from doing just that, which is the exact opposite of what we had during the Trump administration. And Tony, what's so sad about this, ever since OPEC came into being uh, during the 70s, it has been a bipartisan goal of the United States to become energy independent. And we finally became energy independent during the previous administration, just like we finally pretty well secured the border out of the previous administration, and the Biden administration blew it all up. 
on day one. I mean, again, they declared war on fossil fuel. They opened up our border, dismantled all those successful programs. Again, that is by design. This is the result of their stated policies. What will it take to fix this? I mean, how is there the ability to right this energy ship so that, look, I'm like you. I'm for all of the above. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm putting solar panels on my, I'm all for, for that. But I want it to be a pleasant transition. I want to kick people out of their homes because they can't pay their utility bills. Uh, We've we got to think through this. I don't think this is a smart approach. Well, you have to start by recognizing reality. Uh, recognize that we are going to be a fossil fuel-based economy for quite some time. And so drill. Now, burn it as clean as possible. If you're really that concerned about uh, climate change, and I I'm not a climate change denier, but I'm just not a climate change alarmist, we will adapt. I think we'll adapt easily. Well, we and have. Our... We have. We, we, right, and we, and our, we will continue. Our, we, have, we have improved the processes of cleaning the air emissions from these plants, from energy, and from other plants. So we've done a good job of upping our game when it comes to protecting the environment. But we can also push forward nuclear power. I just met with a, a bunch of Canadian uh, power companies, and they're they're promoting smaller and smaller nuclear power to uh, augment uh, the rest of their energy production. So again, it's an all of the above strategy, but recognize reality right. and don't self inflict wounds. Uh, right, which is what we're it, doing. It, it makes no sense. Uh, very quickly, uh, Senator, we're almost out of time, but you, you sent a letter to the acting director of NIH last week asking about these, um, I'm going to describe it as kickback, kickbacks or under-the-table money coming back to NIH employees, including Fauci, from drug companies. What's going on there? Well, again, it's a very opaque process, but uh, apparently there are royalties being paid to employees of NIH and our federal health agencies, which is, you know, completely wrong. Uh, you know, I think pan the pandemic has exposed so much uh, capture by big pharma of our uh, federal health agencies, a, a lot of corruption going on there. Uh, we need people who work for government to be looking at only the out for the people's interest, not their own personal interest. And, and when you're paying royalties on particular drugs or particular uh, technologies, uh, that completely corrupts the process. So we, we've got to figure out exactly what's happening here. We got to end. We have to end the pro practice. We also have to re reestablish doctors at the top of the treatment pyramid. Right now, they're being crushed right. by right. bureaucrats, people like Fauci, hospital associations, uh, state medical practicing boards. Uh, we need to let doctors be doctors. Let them practice medicine. Could not agree more, Senator. We're out of time, but it's always great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Stay well.